Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video we're going to be talking about Fright for Patchwork because it is getting imported to the TCG in Soul Fusion as a... Uh, a long overdue OCG import. Um, we should have had this card a long time ago. I've talked about how I want this card in the TCG a while back. Uh, it's one of those things where I'm not even an avid Fluffle player, right? I really like the design of the archetype, but I'm not like an avid Fluffle player. The nearest thing I can think of and find of me messing around with Fluffles was a video or a set of videos that I did at the very beginning of 2016. So almost three full years ago. But it's definitely a deck that I really enjoy the design of, and Fright for Patchwork when it was announced in November of 2016 to be coming out in a set was one of those things that that card caught my eye because it fixed a lot of issues that both the Fluffle deck and the Fusion mechanic in general have floating around them. But so, here we are in October of 2018 talking about how this card is finally coming to the TCG even though Konami had two separate opportunities to import the card to us. Um, unfortunately, I believe that Fright for Patchwork had its chance to come to the TCG and actually be a meta-relevant card on release in a couple of different scenarios that it could have been dropped on us, but unfortunately, I believe that its import now is a little bit too little too late. Uh, it's one of those cards that is being printed for a deck that they're obviously, you know, just trying to finish out the support for because they can, but at this point, it's not going to do anything in the format, at least in my opinion. There may be some crazy Fluffle Duelist out there brewing a secret deck list that's so far different from what the rest of the world has come across that's capable of like just going to an event and just going like 10-0 in Swiss at a YCS and just absolutely decimating all of its competition. But from what I've seen thus far, I haven't seen anything like that uh, anywhere near like that online in the past few days that I've been researching this deck. Because like I said, I'm not an avid Fluffle player by any stretch of the imagination. I know what all the cards do, and I think it's a very well-rounded archetype, and I really like the design of the archetype because of how well-rounded it is, as well as the artwork on these cards is literally fantastic at the worst of times. But it's one of those things where, uh, just because I had knowledge of the archetype, I was able to go start digging around in places and start looking in places that I know people are discussing this deck, and so far, out of everything that I've seen people like discuss and look for and try to you know make this deck do, it doesn't do anything near meta-defining or meta-relevant on a reliable basis. Uh, being a going second combo deck, Fright for Patchwork really does assist by essentially turning one card into two, meaning that going second starting with six cards, you are going to be potentially starting with seven, one of them being Polymerization and one of them being an Edgent Monster, which are necessary for your fusions, which was a card that was inconsistent to get to. Your Edgent Chains and your Edgent Sabers were always sort of the bottleneck of Fluffles before Patchwork was released, but now you have more access into those cards and Chain naturally searches Patchwork. There's a lot of good things that Patchwork does for the deck, but unfortunately those things are a little bit just outdated at this point in time. We're in a completely different rule set of the game, unfortunately, but uh, that doesn't really f factor that heavily into what the deck's capability is anymore because of the fact that we have access to some really good links, one of which being Boral Sword Dragon, which this deck can actually make pretty easily depending on how you're structuring your plays, and that just enables an OTK engine even further. But even if you're not making any links, Fright for Sabretooth allows you to bring back Fright for Kraken for literally exactly 8,000 on board because the Kraken will be attacking twice with its attack boost that's given to it by Saber Tiger, and the Saber Tiger gets to attack once, and Kraken cleared a monster off the field, and you have a bunch of other options as well for clearing the board on your way into that play. But unfortunately, this card had two very good opportunities to come out. It could have come out to us in Fusion Enforcers, which was a set that everyone thought we were going to get Patchwork in. Everybody thought that Fright for Patchwork was going to be in Fusion Enforcers because every day, getting closer and closer to that set's release, we always knew it was going to be for the Invoked cards, and we knew it was going to be for some Predaplant stuff and all that sort of nonsense, but as we were getting further to the release date, more and more Fluffle cards were just getting rarity bumped in the set for without patchwork in the set, seemingly no reason at this point. Like, they just 
easily missed an opportunity there to put Patchwork in that set, and it would have been not that long of a time after the OCG got the card, and it was doing some things on rogue levels in the OCG at the time that it was released, in terms of, like, a Fluffle deck would get a top here or there at certain Japanese tournaments, but... Fusion Enforcers didn't have Patchwork in it. It's almost like Konami of the TCG was trying to get Patchwork imported and was just constantly talking back and forth with the OCG about potentially doing that, and then the OCG just shot them down, and they were like, well, we've already planned for this set to be of a certain size, and we've already sort of planned to put these fluffles in here because we sort of thought that we were going to get to put Patchwork in Fusion Enforcers, but unfortunately that just did not end up being the case. But then you fast forward further into 2017, and there was another key opportunity that they could have released this card to at least allow it to be decent in the format that was being played out at the time, which was True Draco and Zodiac format. May 2017, the Duelist Pack Dimension Guardians dropped on us, which literally has Fright Fur and Fluffle support in there, and it was a set that was released to be support and, like, just sort of, you know, fan base support for all of the ARC-5 supporting characters, one of which is Sora, who plays Fluffles. And they imported Fright for Daredevil and Fright for Reborn to us, which we hadn't had in the TCG yet, but they missed out on Patchwork, and nobody who plays Fluffles on a competitive level plays either Daredevil or Fright for Reborn, so I guess thanks for that. And then if you look at the Dimension Pack spoiler list, you see it's just filled with all of this shit that we already had, like the Cyber Angels. We had had Dakini, Benton, Edaten, Machine Angel Ritual, and all that shit from the Dragons of Legend pack that came out in, like, August of 2016. <laughs> this is coming out in May of 2017, almost a full year later, and we're not even getting rarity bumps of the Cyber Angel cards that are just taking up space in this set that could have been allocated to other imports and patchwork. It's actually just rarity downgrades of these cards, like Rare Dakini, thanks, okay, Super Rare Benton, she, thanks, Common Edaton, nice deck, Ultra Rare Ritual Sanctuary, all of these cards came in either Super or Secret Rare from the Dragons of Legends set literally almost a year prior. These are not even rarity bumps, they're rarity downgrades in every single situation. But it's one of those things where all of these cards are just taking up spaces that could have been used to import Fright for Patchwork alongside the TCG importing of Daredevil and Fright for Reborn. It just, the more and more I think about it, it just sort of triggers me to no end, because this is a card that even though, like I said, I'm not an avid Fluffle player, I am a fan of the archetype in terms of how it's designed, and when I saw this card, I instantly wanted this card to at least be an option to play around with and mess with, and I didn't really care about it at the beginning of the situation, but as it got further and further into the categories of, okay, we're just never getting patchwork, <laughs> it, it became something that graded on me a little bit more and more because, like, Fluffles is a really cool deck to pilot. It's very similar to another deck that I enjoy playing casually every once in a while, which is Gishki Zeal Gigas Turbo. They both function in a very similar way when you boil it down to the fundamentals of what the decks do. They're both going second combo decks. They want to go second every single game they play. They summon cards in the most economic ways that they can think of doing with uh, through searching them and summoning them and all that sort of stuff and it just tries to out your opponent's entire board or whatever are problems on the board and then attack for game. It's literally just a going second OTK combo deck and both decks operate on a very similar basis. So naturally when I'm thinking of decks that are just sort of fun to play like that, that's sort of the thing that I go to in my mindset. But unfortunately the lack of access to a TCG legal fright for patchwork means that me as a competitive player who would want to put time into learning a fluffle deck is definitely not going to put time into that deck if it doesn't have its best support card. And so, Patchwork could have easily come out during Fusion Enforcers or the Duelist Pack Dimension Guardians, and actually would have been relevant on a rogue level. The Fluffle deck in the OCG with Patchwork has some minor successes against Zodiac Beasts during that format, and that was the format we were in, in the TCG. We were in Zoo True Draco format. The thing is, is that Fright for Sheep 
and like Fright for Tiger clearing back row and stuff made it very easy for that deck to approach that matchup going second because all you had to be able to do was play through a Dryden. So if you had like a Forbidden Chalice for the Dryden, you could easily put Fright for Sheep on the field and make it to where if they are trying to pop with Dryden, it's just going to keep coming back. It was really hard for uh, Zodiacs to deal with. And then you had all of the back row wiping potential that you had through Fright for Tiger. You can easily just blow up three to four back row if that's what you wanted to do. You could literally just throw it in there. And you could do chain blocking to where they couldn't strike you because you can make Tiger Chain Link 1 and something like Edgimp Chain or, uh, Fright or uh, Fluffle Rabbit or Cat or Penguin as Chain Link 2 or whatever. So you could play around strike. It was very easy for you to do these things and play into boards. But we're not in that format anymore. Now we're in a format that's actually pretty similar to Zodiac's in terms of how the best deck is being played, that being Sky Striker. But unfortunately, Sky Striker is so wildly different in what it's actually achieving than Zodiac Beast is, to where it makes it really actually a lot more difficult for Fluffles with Patchwork finally being TCG implemented to play against that deck. It was a lot easier for Fluffles to play against Zodiacs because Dryden't was the only basically searched form of removal the deck was making and popping a card on the field can easily be played around with something like Fright for Sheep and then you would just out back row. The back row had to be hard drawn and the back row was usually stuff that was used to protect the Dryden't or whatever board was established wasn't really searched out to your plays. But then you look at Sky Strikers, where the common cards that the deck can search and have access to are all cards that are really, really detrimental to you trying to play Fluffles. You have Widow Anchor, which is the key offender. Then you have things like Shark Cannon that are popular, which are searchable DD Crows, which means that if you get a Fluffle Wing established in your graveyard, your opponent can easily just Shark Cannon it away before you have a chance to activate it to do your uh, Fluffle Wing plus Toy Vendor play for your insane pluses. And then you have cards like Eagle Booster to deal with, which, if Fluffles was a huge part of the format, was something that was an up-and-coming deck, the Sky Striker players would easily just respect the fact that Fluffles is a deck, and they would try to set up their monster, their Shizuku, with a set Eagle Booster every single game. So Eagle Booster would make their Shizuku, or their Kagari, if that's what they left up, but normally it would be Shizuku, lowering your entire board stats, they would make the Eagle Booster play to where they can make their Shizuku unaffected by all your card effects and undestroyable by battle that turn, which is going to make it very hard for you to actually play and kill them, which is what you have to do. This is very much an all or nothing, I'm OTKing you or I'm probably losing deck. That's the huge problem here. And with Sky Strikers, they're easily going to just search Widow Anchor, which means you can't chain block with Tiger to get rid of the back row and stuff. Um, if you were, like, chain blocking at Strike, they can still just hit you with Widow Anchor, negate it anyway. And they usually have multiple Widow Anchors, which means if your play lied around searching with Dog, congrats, that's not happening anymore. They can negate your monster's effects with Widow Anchor and just take them, so Sabretooth isn't that big of a threat anymore to leave on the field, and neither would Fright for Sheep be because they could just take it and then link away with it. And then you have the things that just revolve around the other cards they have access to, like I've already previously said. Shark Cannon banishing your Fluffle Wings before you get to do your play. Eagle Booster making it to where their stuff can't die by Kraken or Tiger and can't die in battle. In order to game them through Eagle Booster with three spells in Grave, making their Shizuku or Kagari immune to battle and all of your effects, you're going to have to have an insanely good hand that's capable of like pumping out a Boral Sword and a couple of fusions, all while having to play through two to three Widow Anchors and or a Shark Cannon, maybe a Cold by the Grave, maybe an inf Infinite Impermanence, maybe some Hand Traps. It's all just culminating in being a very bad situation for Fluffles compared to what they could have done had this card been released a year and a half prior to when it is now. This card had multiple chances to be released and be actually something that could have made this deck at least something that could have been a rogue level contender, but unfortunately now we are full on over a year past those points, and now this import just sort of seems like an afterthought, just thrown in as a bone. It's like, oh yeah, we forgot about this card, here, have it, enjoy, 
I hope you enjoy the fact that your deck can't play against the best deck of the format, but could have at least tried to play against the best deck of the format when we could have imported this card, and specifically had sets that looked like they were designed to import this card, and had a set that was specifically designed to import two completely separate Fright for cards that we didn't have in the TCG, but for some reason, Patchwork was not one of them. <laughs> I just, I just don't understand. I don't understand how a company has this sort of business model for uh, importing things as slowly as they do. I actually don't really agree with the whole concept of there being such a big list of OCG exclusives and TCG exclusives anyway, because that only acts to further divide the game. But that is a topic for a completely different video on a completely different day but this was sort of a ranty video so sorry for that if that's not what you came here for but if you stuck it through to the end give me a hashtag patchwork in the comments down below but anyway as always guys thanks for watching like the video if you want to see more videos like this subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh content links are in the description to my twitch page as well as the channel's private discord server if you want to catch my streams when they happen go to that twitch page click the follow notification get notified next time I go live as well as if you want to chat with me and some other people that are like-minded and get some deck help or just talk about Yu-Gi-Oh or whatever then the channel discord is linked in the description as I've already said I also announce when I'm live streaming through that discord if you miss twitch notifications or if you want to get advanced notice so all those things Things may be of use to you if you choose to use them but as I've already said thanks for watching thanks for your time as usual guys and take care I'll see you in the next video